Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Amonkhet. Uh, obviously, the set that just rotated out of standard, uh, but we still have some interesting cards in here. Anointed Procession would be great. Liliana Death's Majesty. Uh, Ronus is one of my favorite pers personal favorite cards. Uh, Hazaret is still a card that I would love to get, uh, as well as, of course, uh, the Invocations. Somehow, if we get lucky enough to pull one of those, that would be fantastic. Uh, but I'm pretty excited to open this. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if it's a pack one, pick one scenario. So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our uh, first draft, first round draft pick would actually be. Uh, I did draft a decent amount of this set, though I'm not the best drafter. So I will just go ahead and say uh, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below uh, if you feel so inclined. But our first card here. Uh, Manticore of the Gauntlet, a 5-4 for 4 and a red. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a negative 1 counter on target creature you control, uh, and then it deals 3 damage to target opponent. This is actually a great, uh, great bomb in a red deck win style thing. Uh, it's obviously the top end, as it is a 5 drop, but it's powerful. It's a 5-4. Putting a negative 1 counter on something you own is really not the worst thing in the world in this set, uh, especially late you know four or five turns into the game a lot of your other creatures are going to get outclassed anyway so throwing a counter on them probably not the worst thing in the world uh you can of course always throw it on the manticore itself uh which is perfectly viable but this is definitely something i'd be interested in uh winged shepherd a three three for five and a white it has flying and vigilance and then you can cycle it for one white uh, which means you can discard this and then draw an extra card cycling being a very big mechanic in this set uh, I like this card. This is perfectly fine. Uh, it's a little expensive. It's only 3-3, three, three, so it's like 6-drop is not great. It does have Flying and Vigilance to kind of make up for that, but the most important thing is that you can cycle it. So if you're in a situation where you just don't think you're going to get to 6 mana, or this just isn't doing enough uh, on board, you can just cycle it away, which makes this a playable no matter what. Uh, that being said, again, because it's a 3-3 for 6, the, the opponent most likely is just going to be playing bigger things on 6, and so this really isn't the best card, uh, though I definitely fell into the trap of trying to play it a lot uh, and found it just to be very underwhelming. Uh, all that inking. Um, okay, <laughs> you might not be able to see it on the camera, but the, the ink spots on this are pretty bad. Uh, Miasmic Mummy. Uh, a 2-2 two, two for one and a black. When it enters the battlefield, each player discards a card. This is perfectly fine in the zombie deck. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's like a decent two drop. Uh, there is a viable zombie deck uh, in this set, and so I would be happy to have something like this. Uh, it's not over, it's not as good as the Manticore by any means. It just doesn't have as big of an impact, but it's definitely a powerful or a, a decent two drop, I'll say. Uh, Colossipede, a 5-5 five, five vanilla creature for 4 and a green. Uh, very on curve, perfectly fine. Uh, this is definitely a decent sort of top end card for a green deck. Uh, it's, it's not super exciting to be honest, but like a 5-5 five, five for 5, it's on curve. It's going to deal a lot of damage, so I do like this card. Uh, again, not over the Manticore, but I do like it. Uh, Wasteland Scorpion, a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a black, uh, has Death Touch and Cycling for 2, so you can discard this card and draw any other card uh, from the top of your deck. Uh, this card is fine, uh, it's not amazing, but uh, Death Touch makes this kind of a viable card just because it can block for days. Uh, that being said, you do most often, I feel like you'll probably end up cycling this card, and the idea in draft is to be a little bit more proactive, and so playing a 2-2 two, two on 3 not the greatest, uh, if I'm going to be honest. So not a huge fan of that. Uh, Emberhorn Minotaur, 4-3 for 3 and a red. You may exert it when it attacks. Uh, when you do, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains menace until the end of the turn. This is, again, a very, very powerful uh, red card uh, for just the red deck wins. Uh, we actually, Will and I sat and drafted a pure red deck wins uh, in Amonkhet, and it was amazing. It did really, really well. Uh, this was one of the, the premier cards in that deck. It was fantastic. Uh, sitting at four, it's really sort of in that sweet spot where it's going to be able to deal some damage in the mid to late game. Uh, and it's it's not going to be outclassed as easily as a bunch of the early stuff. Uh, but it's also not too expensive. So the Manticore is a little bit more expensive, but I do still like it, I think, a little bit more. Uh, though I would definitely want both of them uh, with without a doubt. Uh, those who serve a 2-4 for 2 and a white uh, vanilla creature. Nothing too exciting here, though it is actually kind of playable. The only reason I say that, it's a zombie, uh, and it has a big butt, so it's going to be able to block for days. Again, I'd rather have more proactive stuff. 
Uh, but in a situation where I was in zombies, if this was really the only card in the pack, I wouldn't be too unhappy to play it. Uh, on three to get a four toughness creature is fine. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's fine. Uh, Scribe of the Mindful, a 2-2 for two and a blue. You can pay one, tap it, and sacrifice it to return target instant or sorcery card from, the, from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, there are definitely instances where you would want something like this, though I would prefer to have a really powerful instant or sorcery before picking this up. Uh, that being said, if you do have one, I would definitely be interested in picking this card up because you get two uses out of it. Uh, it's very slow, but it's a, it's sort of like a slow uh, Snapcaster Mage or something like that. Uh, definitely not anywhere close to as good, but uh, that's the idea. So not what I'm interested in here, but definitely a decent card. Uh, supernatural Stamina, Instant Speed, uh, Black uh, to, to play it. In, until the end of the turn, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Uh, this is fine. It's a decent combat trick. Uh, the fact that it gives plus 2, plus 0 is not bad for 1 mana, uh, and the fact that the creature comes back if it dies is actually pretty solid. That's really the key piece to this. Uh, I do like this card. I would play this in sort of a black aggressive deck, uh, but uh, definitely not first pick in my mind. Uh, Stinging Shot, one green, instant speed, put three negative one counters on target creature with flying. Uh, you can also cycle it for two. What I like about this card is generally something where it's like, hey, kill this flying creature is mostly just sideboard because there are instances where that may not be very relevant. Uh, but what we found in this set is when you tag cycling on something, uh, you can mainboard it even if there are no viable targets on the opposing side of the field because you can just cycle it away. Uh, so this is actually good removal in green. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. You can main deck one of these, I would say. I wouldn't main deck more than that. Uh, <clears throat> but three negative one counters on something for uh, one green is very powerful. Uh, yes, it's only with flying, but again, you just cycle it away if you don't want it. Uh, I wouldn't want to first pick this by any means, but it is a very powerful card. Uh, True Heart Duelist is a 2-2 two -two for 1 and a white. Uh, it can block an additional creature each combat, and it also has Embalm, which is another new mechanic from this set. So, 2 and a white. Uh, exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white zombie human warrior with no mana cost. Uh, you can only do this as a sorcery. This card is very, very powerful. Uh, hugely, hugely aggressive, but can also be sort of on the defensive role because it can block additional creatures. Uh, it does fit well into the zombie deck as well because of the embalm trigger. Uh, so I do like this card. I'm going to put it here for now because I could actually see uh, either one of these being first pickable. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure out what's in the rest of the pack first. So, Hazaret's Monument. Legendary Artifact for 3 mana. Uh, red creature spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Uh, and whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. This is uh, not a bad card, but of the monuments, this is one of the ones that I'm not super excited about. Uh, you rummage every time you cast a creature spell, which is great. Uh, but ideally, you're going to be dumping your hand pretty quickly. Uh, and so this gets worse and worse kind of as time goes on. Uh, I do like the monuments in draft. I think they're fine. They're not amazing. Uh, but this is not the one I'd be interested in. Uh, Watchers of the Dead, a 2-2 two -two for 2. Uh, exile Watchers of the Dead. Each opponent chooses two cards in his or her graveyard and exiles the rest. This is obviously more of a constructed uh, graveyard hate uh, card, and so for that reason, I don't like it in draft. It's really just not that great. Uh, that being said, it's a little bit better in this set because you do have a lot of Embalm stuff. Uh, however, the opponent chooses the cards that stay in the graveyard, and that's kind of the bad part. Uh, they just choose their best two Embalm creatures, and then they still get them. So I don't like it for that reason. Uh, our rare is Gideon's Intervention, so two and two white for an enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, you choose a card name. Uh, your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name and prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanents you control by, the source, uh, by sources with the chosen name. Not a good card. Uh, definitely not in uh, draft at all. Do not like this, uh, not gonna be the pick. So it's really between these two, uh, a True Heart Duelist and the Manticore of the Gauntlet. Uh, I could kinda see it going either way, though we did have some uh, pretty powerful red cards in this pack, so I think for that reason, I'd hope to wheel something like that and I would take the Manticore, uh, though I could definitely see True Heart Duelist as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like or a comment down below anyway. Uh, and please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We have got tons of it out there for you that we hope you'll enjoy. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack video.